Ayun na. Okay, we're live, y'all. Okay, hello everyone, Samantha here. I pray all is well with you today. We have a special blessing today. My mother-in-law is bringing forth the word of God. So we are gonna be so blessed. I have some family here, uh, my God sister, my BFF, my husband, and my beautiful mother-in-law. We're here to support her and just be blessed by the word. My husband's going to open us up in prayer now. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord God. Uh, Father God, um, uh, just looking at this, this is new. We all in different places <laughs> and we're still here. Lord, you're, you're awesome. Um, and we thank you for it, Lord God. Uh, uh, once again, we, we ask that uh, uh, hearts are open to hear your word. And, um, and we pray for uh, mom, that you would uh, uh, use it for your glory. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless everyone. I pray that your day was... Unmute. Unmute your... Unmute it. You got you to gotta stay on... Right. It's a, Can you uh, hear me now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. Praise God. I pray that everyone's, uh, God bless everyone. I pray that this word that the Lord has given me and, and that I'm going to share with everyone, that it will be a blessing. You know, I've just spent time just to pray and ask God, what does he want to say to us in this time that we're in? And so I just want to begin just saying that in the things that are happening in this earth and it's, it's in the, we're in a um, pandemic. And so with that being said, um, there are so many things that we might need in this pandemic. And one of the things that the, the Lord has really laid on my heart at this time was that we need a sure foundation. And because you know how the song we sing many times that, you know, um, on Christ the solid rock I stand and all the other ground is sinking sand. So with that being said, we need a sure foundation because of so much stuff that is happening around here, around the earth, around the world. And it's kind of drawing our attention away from what we really need to be focusing on. And this is the plan of the enemy to get us disheartened, to get us so that we cannot function, that we cannot be able to survive and get through this. But God is telling us we can get through this. And so the scripture that I want to start with today is coming from the book of Matthew. And starting as uh, the chapter is chapter seven and starting at the 24th verse. That's Matthew 7, 24 through 27. And it reads as follows. And this is in the New King James Version. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be liking as a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains descended, the floods came, 
and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was, was its fall. Amen. So we read in the word, it's talking about building a house and building that house on a solid foundation. So that's, that's, that's the, my subject today is we need a sure foundation. So as we go on, um, you know, the thing is that so many things are kind of like, kind of like grabbing our attention and trying to get us to look at other things, but we want to hold fast to the word of God. And so well, as I was studying the word and, and saying, well, God, what do you want to say to us? What is it that you really want to get us to understand? Well, the first part of the scripture, when it talks about, it says in the 24th verse, it says, the, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. So I hear, I want to tell you today, if we want to be able to stand, we need to be a wise man or a wise woman, a wise person. And in order for us to, to be able to stand. And, and God is saying, those who do this. And now the thing is that God wants us to hear his word and not only hear his word, but obey his word. And if we obey his word, then we're being wise. But I, I want to tell you that things always try to take our attention away from God. And one of the things that the Lord talked to me about was uh, the things that are in the world. And we know in the world has a, what it says in, uh, in, in uh, let me go back to my base here. It says, well, what, well let's, let's just back up a little bit. If we look at if we look at the book of Psalms fifty one verse five, and the, and the King James version says, "Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me." First of all, out the gate, when we're born into this world, we're born into sin, and this this iniquity has shaped us. So you know, it's pretty easy to do the wrong thing. It's pretty easy to rely on this flesh because it's just, it comes naturally for us to be that way. But one of the things that the, the God is saying to, saying to us today is that even though we're in this world, we are not of this world. And that's what the scriptures tell us. We're in the world, but we are not of the world. But remember that, uh, and, and, and there are things in the world that uh that 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 pulls at us and one of those things that it, it says in first john the second chapter verse 16 it says for i for all that is in the world all the things that are in the world it says the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is 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 it this is not of the father but it is of the world and it, then it says in verse 17a, now this is in, I'm sorry, it's 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. And now this is verse 17, part A. It says, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof. So in the world, we know that there is the lust of the flesh, there's the lust of the eyes, and there's the pride of life. So, so what I did was I went and looked at that word lust. Now, we mostly, when we hear the word lust, the first thing that comes to mind is that it, it has a sexual connotation to it. So the, the, in the dictionary, it says it's an intense sexual desire. Then it says, or appetite. And it also says it's uncontrolled. Now, this is what happens in the world. This is, this is, this is how, when, when we deal in our flesh, it's, it's, it, it can get out of control. We can have such strong desires for certain things, certain things that we want to have and certain things we want to do. And these kind of a things that's in the world that drives at us. 
that comes after us. Because, and because remember, we're born in sin. We're born in this. We're shaped in this. But it doesn't have to rule us. Okay? So we got to look at that. So now let's talk about, I want to talk about the five natural senses that we have. So the five natural senses that we have is one, one, sight, two, hearing, three, smell, four, taste, five, touch. These are the five senses. These are our five natural senses. Now, if we want to, we're going to look at those five natural senses and we're going to see, we're going to see whether or not we are what the word says. Are we going to be wise when we hear these words of the Lord? Are we going to be like it as a wise man? Or are we going to be like it says in verse, verse uh, 26? Will we be like it as a foolish man who builds his house on the sand? Now we have a choice here. Are we going to build our house on the rock? Or are we going to build a house on the sand? So now, but if we build our house on the rock, we're going to be a wise man. But if we build our house on the sand, we're going to be a foolish man, a foolish person, let's just say, male or female. So now let's look at those five senses. Okay, because I wanted we want to now if 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 we was going to make a chart, we would put the five senses in the middle of the chart, and we can line them up in the middle. And on each side, we will say how the senses are in the natural sense, in the physical body, what naturally they are. But they're also the five senses has a spiritual side to it. Now. Now we can either walk in the walk in the flesh and and we'll you know what happens when we walk in the flesh. We desire the things of the flesh that you know we we're not walking in the spirit. And so we have to be able to walk in the spirit. And so one of the first things that we want to look at is sight. Now when we look at when we see sight and we talk about our eyes and what we see so, you know, we use our eyes for how we see, where we're going, what to watch for. You know, we definitely need our eyes. But sometimes you ever have, have something happen to you and your eyes like playing tricks. Did I really see that? Or and, and sometimes we can't always rely on what we see. Now, in comparison to what's happening in the earth right now, What's happening in the earth now that we're being inundated, we're watching these things on TV, we're seeing all these, this, this news, we're seeing all these things, and, and you know, that happens in life, not only in a pandemic, but we, we start looking at the things that are around us, you know, and we start watching this and, and, oh, and sometimes, and the enemy always trying to feed into us negativity always trying to get us to see the worst side of everything. And so sometimes we can't always rely on what we're seeing through these natural eyes. Because sometimes we don't see correctly. You know, that's why some of us wear glasses because our visions are blurred or our visions are not, not is what it should be. So, but you know what? When we gain spiritual sight, we don't necessarily mean need eyeglasses anymore because now we're looking through not only the, these lenses, these through the iris, but we're looking through the spirit of God. So when we start looking through the spirit and looking in his word and seeing what his words say, then we have a different kind of sight. So now let's look at some scripture here. Let's look at second. Corinthians 5, verse 7. So let's turn to that. Let's look at 2 Corinthians. Let me see where we are here. 
Second Corinthians, verse uh, chapter five, verse seven. Let me just slow down and let me breathe. <sighs> Sometimes I just get a little nervous here, but let's look at what the scriptures say, okay? Let's just take our time and see what God is saying to us. It says here, verse seven says, we walk by faith and not by sight. That's what the word of God tells us. So, okay, so we can't really rely on what we see all the time. Because sometimes sometime we don't see what we need to see. Sometimes all we see is there's no hope. There's no help. There's nobody around. There's nobody here. I don't know how I'm going to get this done. I don't have a job. I don't have this. I don't have. This. And this is what the enemy keeps showing you. But what God is saying to us, don't trust what you see. Because what you see right now is not always going to be. So one of the things that we need to do is to learn how to trust God and, and not walk by sight but walk by faith. And faith means that we're going to trust God. We don't see it. We don't see the answer. We don't see the, how it's going to work out, but we're going to trust God because we're not going to use our natural senses, these natural eyes to rely on, but we're going to rely on the spiritual eyes. Now, I'm going to not going to go too detailed because I can, we can spend all day on sight alone. Because sight sometimes, you know, you know, play tricks on us or, you know, the enemy plays tricks on us and always trying to get us our eyes off of God. Okay, let's talk about hearing. Now, in the word, let's, oh, let me go back a little bit. Let's go. Also, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Let's look at that. So this is also talking about sight, okay? This is 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter two. Bear with me, bear with me. I had everything marked off, so I thought. Okay, let's find that. First Corinthians chapter two, here we go. It says here, for it is written, now this is verse nine and 10, okay? First Corinthians chapter two, verses nine and 10. But as it is written, this is the New King James Version again as well. Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor have it entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. Come on, let's talk about that. See, what the eye can't see, the spirit can see. So we need to look through our spiritual eyes and see, because God, the word is telling us, eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard, nor has it even entered the heart of what God will do. You see, all, all the time we think about what we don't have and, or what, what seems to be so bad. But he, as this says, it haven't even entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Come on, we love God. So he got something prepared for us. When we look at pandemic, I mean, our natural man feel weak, but we got a spiritual man. We got spiritual eyes and we, on, we not only do we have natural eyes, but we have spiritual eyes. So let's look through, let's do, let's look through the lenses of the spirit. If you want to look, look through the spirit. Let the spirit lead you. Let the spirit guide you. Let the, let, let, let the spirit 
open your eyes to the truth of God's word. But now you can't you can't possibly understand it if you don't open the book. Okay? Sometimes we read and we don't understand. But the word of God tells us that if any man lack wisdom, what did it say? If lack wisdom, let us, let us ask God. God would give, he would he say, I would not withhold it from you. Okay, let's talk about some hearing here. Let's talk about how we hear. Now, also in that same scripture, it tells us that the eyes have not seen, nor the ears heard. So now we're talking about our natural eyes. You know, our ears are to hear sounds, to hear words, to hear voices, to hear the birds chirping, to hear the, the, the thunder rolling in the sky. You know, we, our ears hear so much. And you know what? I'm telling you, be careful what you, what you are allow, allowing to go into your ear gate. Remember, what you allow in your ear gate will affect what you are going to do. Sometimes that's why I don't listen to the negativity because at, that's the reason why a lot of times I look at the news, I get a little bit to get an idea how things are going, but I do not inundate myself every day and every hour I got to find out what's going on. I got to see who, what, who's doing what. And I'm telling you, if you fill your ears with that stuff, it will make you disheartened. So now let's look at how, well, how are we supposed to be hearing? When we go back to that same scripture of 1 Corinthians um, chapter 2, verse 9, it says our ears has not heard. Our ears have not heard. So now we need to, to, who are we supposed to be listening to? Now, what the word also tells you that we are the sheep, God's sheep. And the word tells us in John chapter, um, uh, in, in the book of John chapter 10, verse 27. I'm giving a lot of scriptures. So if you, if you don't get to them, just write them down so you can go back to them so that you can reread these scriptures yourself. You need to write them down and go back and study that word on your own so that you can get a full and let the Holy Spirit just reveal to you the full understanding that you need to get with that word, okay? So it says here in chapter, uh, in John 10th chapter, verse 27, it says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So it's telling us that we, his sheep, hears God's voice. And God, not only does we hear his voice, he's, it, God says, I know you. Sometimes we think God don't know us, but God knows you. He really knows you. He knows you better than you know yourself. Sometimes I think I, 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 some people think I, I know me. I, me, I don't do this and I don't do that. But honey, let me tell you something. Pandemic made you did a whole lot of stuff you did, thought you wouldn't have done. Or you, or you had to do stuff that you thought you would never have to do. So you don't know what you might, what you're capable sometimes, you know? I mean, I remember we going to the supermarket, but it's like, you know, simple. You know, you go get your food and you get on your line and you pay your groceries and you bag it all up and you go on home. Now you go to groceries, it's like a, a major ordeal. Oh, you got to have a mask on. You know, keep your social distance. You can't even say, hey, you can't have really conversation with people or you find people getting too close and you start freaking out. I remember the first time I went, out to go to that supermarket, I was, it was like, I was, I was tripping, truly. A woman, one of the workers come up behind me. I didn't know she was behind me. I went to back up and bumped into her. I almost flipped out and told her, what are you doing? I didn't say it out of my mouth. I looked at her like, 
you touch me. <laughs> you actually touch me. I, 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 I was freaking out. So what I'm telling you, sometimes we don't know what we're capable of. But if we keep listening to stuff that not is of God, just I'm telling you, don't do it. I'm telling you, just don't do it. Now, remember, we're building a house. We're building our house and we want to make sure it's on a sure foundation. We talked about our ear, talked about our eyes, we talked about our ears. Well, let's talk about smells. Now, this is a normal sense. Take a sniff, you smell food, you know how food smells good. Well, you, you can smell and taste, see whether it's, it smells good. And you can tell whether it's good or what is bad. You can smell if there's fire or if there's smoke. You know, because when you start smelling smoke, you think like there has to be a fire somewhere. So we need our senses. But sometimes we're always looking, or I would say, looking at the wrong stuff or even smelling the wrong stuff. And sometimes uh, our, our nose will play tricks. Say, say if we're all stopped up and sometimes we can't smell as good as we need to smell. And we smell something, it smells like it, it seems like it's okay. And you go to eat it and it's not good. So sometimes our noses don't even work. But you know what? I want to say something that, that God can smell. We have an aroma. And I, 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 I really didn't think about that. And so when I started reading the word, and it says in Corinthians, back to Corinthians again, we're back, we're in the, the second Corinthians now, and we're at chapter two again. Let us look at that again, because I, as I was reading it, I realized something, that we have a scent. You know how when you, we put on perfume, and they said, wow, you smell great. Or you, 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 uh, you know, or I, I love Bath and Body. I love all the different citrus kind of smells. And I like that fresh smell, and especially in the summer months. Or oh, I like this thing called, I don't know whether it's, I think it's from uh, Bath and Body. It talks about, it says, it's, it's called red. That red smells so good. Now, everybody when you put on perfume, everybody's scent doesn't smell the same. Because I can put it on me and I'll smell, I'll smell one way. You put it on yourself, you smell another way. But, you know, God also say we have a smell. Let's read what, what God says. And it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Now, I'm going to read, I'm going to read that out of the new and I'm going to read that out of NIV. So let me get that on my computer for a hot minute here. Okay, we're going to go to the second Corinthians here. I'm not going to read that out of the King James. I'm going to read this out of the NIV. And it says here in NIV, it says, verse 15 and 16, it says, for we are of excuse me for we are to god the pleasing aroma of christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing so god says we we are a pleasant aroma we are please we are pleasing aroma let me see what the king james version says to that Okay, let's see what the King James, how they, the, how they word that. It words as, it says here that, for we are to God, the fragrance of Christ. So we have a scent among those who are being saved and among those, uh, among 
among those who are perishing. Now it also says in verse 16, it says, to one, we are the aroma of death leading to death and to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? Now I said, well, God, what do you mean by that? So when it, re I'm going to read it again in the NIV, verse 16, it says, to the one who are an aroma that brings death to the other and the, an aroma that brings life. Now we, we, can, we can have an aroma that can bring life or we can have an aroma that brings death. So how, how is that possible? Because when we take on dead things, when we, when we occur dead things to ourselves, and what are some of those dead things that we do? And that's talking about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. When we start looking at what we can gain, it's, it's like the, we care more about the things of the world than we think, of, think about than the things of the God, of then of God. I, you know, I, I want the best. I want, I want the Gucci bag. Now, look, mind you, I ain't got nothing wrong with getting a Gucci bag. If you can afford a Gucci bag, get you a Gucci bag. But I'm saying if Gucci bag is good, but long as Gucci bag ain't got you. Gucci bag, you know, all those wonderful things that you can have. If you, I say you can have these things, but these things can have you. Because if they have you, then it's going to cause death to you because you're going to do anything to get it. That's the same thing about money. It, we need money. You can't live in this world without money. And money is the answer to things that we need in this world. But money can't have you, that you will do anything to get it. Or you want to have, it's, it's almost like you want to have a, 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 a um, um, position you want people to look at you, oh, I got the best clothes, I got the this and I got the that. But that, that's not important. Because that, that if you are, are, are lusting after this, you're consuming after things, like then you, that's going to have your life and you're not going to be able to do what is necessary because then we become selfish. That's what happens to a lot of us. Every, every one of us are susceptible to these things. And when we're talking about the pride of life, we're talking about how we appear to other people. If you more concerned about what other people think about you and then what God thinks about you, that you're living a life that is in death. It's not life. Because let me tell you, with God, God gives you the abundant life. And abundant life doesn't also necessarily mean, and it doesn't mean that, oh, I have to be poor so I can be happy. I don't think so. Or I don't, I can't have anything. You know, I've heard that so many, you know, like, you know, oh, I don't need much. And, you know, we shouldn't want for this or that. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have things in life. God gave us a have life and more abundant. And he says it makes our life full. And, and being poor ain't being full. Okay. But if you, if that's, that's the only thing you want to do. Gucci bags, all you want to buy. You know, let other people look at you and see what you got. Then enjoy that because that's all you're going to get. And God, that's not what God, God has so much more for us. Remember, we're building our house on South End because listen, listen to this. Pandemic took away position, took away jobs. Not only, and most important way, importantly, took away lives. So you can have all the things, but if you're dead, what are you going to do with them? It? It'll go to someone else. So we got to think about stuff like that. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail. I want to talk about taste. You know, because the word, you know, um, if you notice, I like to eat. Okay? I like to eat. And it's very evident I like to eat. 
you know, quite a few of us, it's very evident we love good food. And I said, nothing wrong with good food. But sometimes what happens is we overindulge. Instead of getting maybe one cookie or two cookies, we get a bag. Instead of getting a cup of ice cream, we get a pint, half a gallon. Or, you know, we get, maybe we'll just get a little bit of chips. I'll get a little bag. No, we go get the big bag, family size. Okay. So sometimes we can be very, now it's easier for us to do uh, in, indulgent. Well, I don't have anything else to do. I just might as well eat good. I might as well have something good to taste. I mean, I, 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 I ain't fighting you. But when, when you, when we overindulge, now we have to get on the bike and I got a stationary bike here now because I got to get off all this indulging I've did and all this wonderful tasting. It was good going down, but now it's, it's taking its toll. And so sometimes we can be overindulgent and everything that takes good for us, it's good to us is not necessarily good for us. I mean, a small cup, is good, but a gallon of ice cream, no, it's good going down, but it it's not worth it. So let's find out. But well, what are we supposed to be tasting? Now we have to eat to live, in order to live, in order to survive. But there's also some other kind of eating we need to do, and that is eating the word. You know, if you want to get fat. Eat the word, eat up the word, eat the word. I mean, get, and because if we get fat with the word, it's not going to give us high blood pressure. If we get fat with the word, it's not going to give us diabetes. We get fat with the word, it's not going to give us a heart attack. We get fat with the word of God. It's going to, it's, in fact, it will help us physically. You know, eating the word of God. You know, and I think it's so important. So let's look at, let's look at Psalms 119. And let's see how the word is for us. Okay, let's look at Psalms 119. All right. And it says in Psalms 119, uh, verse 103, Psalms 119, verse 103. And it reads as follows. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So we're comparing natural taste to spiritual taste. And sometimes we, we have an appetite for food. I mean, it's just natural that we have a taste for food and sweet things and, you know, and things like that. But we have to have this taste for God's word because the word of God tells us that how sweet are your words to my taste. God's word has to become sweet to you. So when you start reading that word, it's just, you just eat it and, it and it gets, it gets to be so good because what the word is doing, it is, it's reviving us. It's, it's giving us life and it's helping us to learn how to live in this, in this world. And we got to take God's word line upon line, precept upon precept. And when we start learning that, and start learning his word and loving his word. And it becomes a part of us. When we start digesting that word, it becomes a part of our being. And we become such better people. And I'm always saying, I will always want to be better. You know? Because so much stuff out here is not good. So much stuff that's going on is just not good. And only things seem to be... And, and I'm telling you, and, and honestly and truthfully, our body is always decaying. You know, that's that's just life. You know, I would love that that my knees don't hurt anymore. 
I would love that, you know, I, I can jump out of bed when I, I did when I was younger, but it's not happening. So we're all constantly decaying. So we want to we want to eat God's word. Because when we start eating the word, when we start reading the word and the word telling us that how that God wants to bless us, that we know that by by his stripes, we are healed. So we get sick. God will heal us. If, if we, 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 we want a miracle, the word tells us to get him, uh, give, will give us a miracle. So it's so important that we just love God's word. I think it's so, I think it's so important because his, his, his words are sweet and, and it will bless us. Okay, let's talk about touch. When we talk about touch, when we start touching things, it, we can tell by different ways that if this is something is smooth, if it's something is rough, if it's hot or it's cold, if it's, you know, and then there's also bad touches. You know, we talk about, you know, like you tell your child, you know, that's nobody's supposed to be touching that way. That's a bad touch. So that invades our person, that invades our bodies you know, and stuff like that, you know, things about people getting raped or people even getting shot, you know, or e e people hurting you or, or abuse, physical abuses. These are touches that are not good and it doesn't make us feel good. But there, but when, when we talk about getting a touch from God, now I was reading, um, doing some research about touch because I was looking at the five senses and I, I started reading uh, online and I saw where they was talking about two, these um, Harvard and Yale um, psychologists were talking about touch and, these, and they said that just a touch can influence your thoughts and your decisions. So somebody touching you can influence you in a way of what you're possibly what you're thinking about and the kind of decisions that you that you that you might make so i'm very i oftentimes talk to my daughters about is um when 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 young girls dealing with young men um when you when men sometimes touch you what it does it breaks down the barriers between you. It breaks down, it, it, it makes the person more familiar with you. So that's the reason why it's very important to not to let people, to, uh, men as young women, I'll say the same thing about um, young men as well, not to let women touch you in inappropriate ways. That Because what happens is it breaks down barriers for you. And it, and it makes you, it, 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 it removes inhibition and they can kind of influence you in to getting them, coercing you into doing things that you may normally wouldn't do. Sometimes when you have an attraction to someone, sometimes it, it causes you to, make, it influences you. It causes you to do maybe something you wouldn't have done. So I'm very, very, I caution people a lot about this about touch. Be careful about that. Inappropriate touching. Especially if this is not, that's the reason why I believe that we have to get married. Because see, when you start inappropriately touching, because it breaks down those barriers and in that, it, 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 it removes the boundaries that you have set for yourself that you have set for marriage. Because these inappropriate, a touches and then when you go further the further you get into it sometimes the deeper you're in it is hard for now you to pull out of it so it's very important that you be mindful of inappropriate inappropriate touching but the word god tells us about touch and um sometime you know i've heard people say if i can't touch it, taste it, feel it, then I don't believe it. And we know that when um, in John, uh, the, the book of John chapter 20, verse 27, um, in that chapter, Jesus is telling Thomas to say, 
because he couldn't believe that Jesus had appeared. So he tells, so he reappears to them again and tells them, well, John, here, stick your finger in where I was nailed. Put your hand in my side. Because he says, I don't want you not believing. If you got to touch it and, and touch it and feel it so you can believe, because he said, I don't want you. Let's just read that. Don't just take my word for that. Let's just read what that word says. Okay. I know, I, I, I'm hoping that this gives us a under, clear understanding about how not to allow our lives to, to live in our natural senses. So we don't want to live in the natural because you know the the, the carnal man is enmity the carnal man is enmity against God so you don't want to get caught up in this so let's read John chapter 5 no sorry John chapter 20 and that is verse 27 and he, and this is Jesus talking to Thomas he says then he said to Thomas Reach your fingers here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it in, put it in, put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. So sometimes God was willing, Jesus was willing to let him put his, put his finger through his nails in his hand and his hand in his side because he didn't want Thomas unbelieving. And, you know, we're also talks about taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, sometimes let, let God touch your life. Sometimes we, we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to touch our lives. We have, a, we have, a, we have not experienced God in a way that totally convinces us that he is real and that he's who he says he is. But God will, God will, God will manifest himself to you in your life. You do not have to worry about that. If you want to know God, God will reveal himself to you. He will touch your life. And you know what? Honestly, let's, if truth be told, if it had not been for God touching our lives, where would we be today? If it was not for the mercy of God, where would we be today? We would be in an awful state. So let God touch us. Okay, now we, I've dealt with the senses. I've dealt with sight, hearing, smell, taste. You know, also, you know, we cannot also, we cannot, one of the things we cannot allow to happen is to be governed by our soulish man. So when we talk about the soulish man, we're talking about our body, our will, and our emotions. So we talked a lot about the body, the natural body, and how it can affect us if we live and walk in the flesh. And, you know, one of the things that we also have to look at is our will because some of us have strong wills you know we want to do what we want to do when we want to do it some of us are very emotional and that's just and there's nothing wrong with it's you think about it is that none of these things that god has created us in us is bad because when he created Adam from Eve in the beginning, he said, after he created each, each thing he created, he said, and it is good. So we're good. We are good ground. The body is good. If you look at your body and how wonderful it's made and how it functions, I mean, it has to baffle the scientists how this body works. It's so wonderfully created how the body heals itself, how you get a cut in it and then skin closes up and get a scab and, and your, 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 your skin is renewed. So all of these things is so wonderful. And to have a will, to have a will to say, 
I will not or I won't to do or not. Those are important things God has, God has placed in. But some of us have wills that are not yielded to the Holy Spirit. And that's where the danger comes. When our bodies are not yielded, that's a danger. When our wills are not uh, yielded, it's a danger. When our emotions are not yielded, it's a danger. And this is where the ground that the enemy is going to come and attack us. When he's talking about emotions, to get you upset, to make you react too quickly, to not think before you react, to do things when we get high in our emotions. So it's very, it's very important to yield ourselves to the Lord. That's crucial. That's very important. Let's let's let me look at this scripture that I wrote down here. And this scripture is from Psalms 103. Let's just take a look at that. Let me see exactly what the Lord is saying here. Psalms 103. And that is verses two through eight. It's got a little lengthy. But so this is talking about the soul of man, the soulish part of us. And this is what God wants us to do with the soul of us. How, how do we not allow the soul, the soulish part of our, ourselves be in control and ha run havoc with us? It says in Psalms 103, let's start at verse one. It says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. My, no, that's the NIV. Let's not read NIV today. Let's read, um, oh yeah, let's read NIV. I'm sorry, forgive me. It says, praise the Lord, my soul, all my inner, inmost being, praise his holy name. So. Now, when we talk about the soulish part, our innermost being in our inward selves, this is what, what the psalmist is telling us. The, it's, it's telling, you're going to tell your soul, praise the Lord. You're going to tell the innermost being for you, in, in, in you, praise his holy name. Because I'm telling you, praise works. He says, Praise the, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not his benefits. Because what the enemy wants you to do is to forget the benefits of God and make you feel like there's no hope and there's no, no reason to go on. But the, 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 God is sick, the psalmist is telling us, praise the Lord. Don't allow your soulless man to get disheartened. And don't forget what, he's been, what the benefits God has given, have given us. And then he says, who forgets, forgives all our sins and heal all our diseases. This is what he wants our soul to do. Remember that God is the one who forgives us of sin. God is the one that heals our bodies. He says, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. This is what God does. The enemy ain't trying to help you out. Ain't trying to do no, not trying to do right by you. But God is always doing right by us. He says, He who satisfy your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I'm 67. I can feel like a young person. Man, I can't move like one, but I can feel like one. And I can definitely get around and it's not over because the fat lady ain't saying yet. <laughs> and it's not over to his own because Jesus is still on the throne. Okay. And then it says, who satisfies your desires with good things? You know, sometimes we think like, man, can I get something good? Yeah, you can. God going to give you some good stuff. And so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Because not right now, blacks are being oppressed, different people are being oppressed, but God is going to work justice and righteousness. 
Don't you think that God don't sit on that throne and looking down low that he ain't going to take care of his people. He's going to take care of the poor and the oppressed and anybody that's doing wrong. Don't you think, don't fret not yourself because of evil dudes and you thinking they getting away. They ain't getting away. No, they're not. And it says, he made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. So if he made it known to Moses and he made it his ways known to Moses and to the people of Israel, he gonna make his ways known to you. And if you're not sure about what you need to do, the word of God says in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You can always come out a conqueror. There's no way that you should be defeated. No way. And it says in verse eight, it says, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. And that's one thing I always say. If you don't remember nothing else, remember that God loves you. When everything else fails, his love never fails. His love never gives up. His love will always be there. And even when we mess up, his love does not go nowhere. God, that's, 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 my, that's, my, that's my solid rock right there. That's my house that's built on a solid foundation. That's the love of Christ Jesus, that Jesus has, God loves me so much. That I could, I mean, when everything else fails, his love will never fail me. And I also want to tell you that God is, Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. And that's in John 14, verse 6. It talks about how Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So remember, he's the way that we need to go. He's the truth we need to seek. And that's going to give us the life that we need to have. Okay? This is the way we want to live. We want to be a wise person. We want to build our foundation on solid ground. And that solid ground and that solid rock is Jesus. So if you want surety, if you want consistency, if you want success, if you want better life, you want an abundant life, it's in Jesus. The only way is in Jesus. And because he done this because he loves us so much, he sent his son and his son died and he rose again. And we have, a, we have life. For God so loved this world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me, I, it's no sense of living and you're not living the abundant life. What's the point? We might as well give up and say, oh, forget it. But remember, the only way we have abundant life, that is in Christ Jesus. So we got to make some choices here. We're going to build our house on, on the solid rock or we're going to build our house on the sand. Because remember, both houses, the scripture says, a wise person is going to build his house on the, on, the, on, the, on the rock. A foolish man is going to build his house on the sand. Now it says, the flood came, the winds blew, the storm came. And the one that was on the rock did not fall, but the one on the sand fell. Are we going to be wise? What are we going to, what are we building our house on? And in this season and time that we're in right now, we have no other place to go but Jesus. Because honey, this pandemic don't care nothing about nobody. I don't care who you are and what you are or who you thought you was or what you had. This ain't stopping no pandemic. It will suck the life out of you. But Jesus died on Calvary for COVID-19. That was already, that was already healed at Calvary. 
there, there's the, there, we, Christ is, what I'm trying to say today is that we need the straw foundation and the only straw foundation is Jesus. You can't trust anything else because everything else is failing. We look all around and says, this ain't working. But Jesus is always working. And even in the midst of pandemic, yet God is blessing us. You got to think about that because so much more could be wrong, but it isn't wrong because of God's grace and his mercy. So remember, build your house on, a, on the rock. And the rock is Jesus. So I pray, I, I've said a lot. I pray that whatever I've said, that it will bless someone's life. I pray that if you're, if you're not, if you have not received Christ as your savior, if you have not accepted him, now is the time. He's sitting there waiting for each of us so that we can be on sure foundation. That you don't have to have your house when the, when the storm comes and the rain comes and beat on that house and come, you know, up that we, you're going to stand. And that's what we want to stand today. Because we're going to, we want to see the other side of this pandemic. And we can see the other side of the, the pandemic and great success. Because that's God's desire for us. And I want to live abundant life with Jesus. That's for sure. So I pray that, you know, somebody receive whatever they needed to receive. And I just want to just say a quick prayer. Father, I just come to you right now. We all do. We come to you right now, Father, right now. And Father, we pray that those that do not know you, God, that they will come to know who you are, that they will want to have that sure foundation. I pray, oh God, Father, that, there, that you will open up our eyes of understanding and that we will see that we need you now more than ever. Father, this is the time that we need to call upon your name, that we need to develop a relationship with you. And Lord, Father, you have separated us sometime from family and friends and everything around. And now we have nowhere else to look but to you. Sometimes, you know, things need, things are getting our attention. And sometimes we get too busy and we get too involved. But now we have to sit. We have to isolate ourselves and we have to take time to spend with you. And Father, you're waiting to have a conversation. God, I pray that you will continue to speak to our hearts and our minds. And that we will be able to hear your voice clearly in every matter, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. And we praise your holy name. Amen and amen. Okay, back to you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mom. Thank you so much. We're going to also ask Tanisha too to pray as well. Because we know we can use all the prayer we can get. So this is my God sister. You can go ahead and pray, Tanisha. Okay, amen. Lord God, we come before you right now just wanting to say thank you, Lord God, for this lesson, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that it is indelibly inscribed in our hearts. I thank you, Lord, for those who were watching along with us and those who will see uh, this live stream at a later point. We thank you, Lord, because you remind us that your word is quick and sharp and powerful, um, more than a two-edged sword. And I thank you, Lord, that your word is timeless. So even as we learned about the senses, both in the natural and the spiritual realm, Lord Father God, I pray that people will be encouraged, Lord Father God, to know that we have an aroma, a sweet smelling aroma to you, Lord Father that they would be reminded, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus, that um, we are to walk by faith and not by sight, Lord Father God, and that you have a plan for us, Lord Father God. You said in your word on tonight, Lord, that no eye has seen, no ear has heard what you have in store for those who love you. And Lord God, I thank you for those who are compelled to come into the life-saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and how their lives will never be the same again as a result of entering in a relationship with you. And 
We thank you, Lord, that we were reminded even on tonight, Lord God, that you died um, already in, in preparation for this pandemic and that this pandemic did not take you by surprise. Um, and I, I thank you, Lord, for sparing the lives of everyone on the line, Lord Father God, and our loved ones. And Lord, we just pray your comfort for those who are grieving the loss of family members and friends, Lord God, of, of people who were uh, who passed as a result of, of COVID-19, Lord Father God, and just other things that were going on with their health. We pray, Lord God, to uh, take this word, Lord God, show us how to apply it. Show us how to uh, apply it to the different areas of our lives, Lord Father God, and let it wash over us. I pray a blessing, Lord Father God, over uh, Pastor Samantha and Pastors Michael Jolliker, Lord Father God. I pray that you would just continue to bless their ministry, multiply it, bless the need of everybody, the silent and Lord God, the needs that have been articulated for everybody who's watching, who will watch, and everybody who is a part of this uh, this call and this mission today, Lord Father God, we bless you. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So everyone, thank you so much for joining my. That was a good, awesome word. Jesus is our sure foundation. And we know people are going to be blessed when they come and see the word of God. So we love you and we want to say thanks for watching. God bless you and remember Jesus loves you. Bye-bye. Thank you.